Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is increasing triplet subsequence. So in this question, we're given an integer array called nums and we have to return a boolean value true or false. We have to return true if there exists a triplet of indices i, j and k such that i is less than j and j is less than k. The element at i is less than the element at j and the element at k. The element at j is less than the element at k. If we are not able to find such indices i, j, k which are following these conditions, we have to return false as the output. If you are able to find, you have to return true as the output. So coming to this example, there exists a subsequence 1, 2 and 3. So we return true and in this case, it is a descending order so it does not satisfy. So we return false. In this case, the output is true because this is an increasing subsequence of three indices i, j and k. So this is i and this is j and this is k. Now let's take a look at these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the first example. We are given the nums array. So I've taken the first example here. Now we have to check for three indices i, j and k. So we need to keep track of three values. So what we can do is we can keep track of two values first and second. And instead of keeping track of the third value, we'll use the current iterator since we are going to iterate through the array from left to right. I will start from the beginning and it will reach the end. So the element pointing at i will be the third number which we are going to compare with these two values. So let's create two variables first and second and I'm going to assign it with the integer dot max value. Since we have to find the minimum possible values, let us assign them with the maximum possible values initially using integer dot max value. So there will be 2 power 31 minus 1 initially. So i is equal to 0, we are at 1. We check if the current value nums of i is equal to 1. We check if nums of i is less than first. First is equal to integer dot max value 2 power 31 minus 1. This is a large value, right? So the, obviously 1 is less than that. So this condition satisfies. So you found the first minimum value. So update that value first with 1. So first will be updated with 1. And if any of these values get updated once in that iteration, we go on to the next iteration. So i will move forward as we updated this. Now i is at 1, we are at 2. So nums of i is 2. So if we check the first condition, if nums of i is less than first, 2 is less than 1, this condition fails. So we go to the second condition. We check if nums of i, 2 is less than or equal to 2 power 31 minus 1. Second has the value this, right? This condition passes, so we update second. So second will have nums of i, nums of i is equal to 2. So second is updated to 2. Since we updated word value, i will move forward. Now i is equal to 2, it is pointing at 3, so nums of i is 3. Now we check if current element 3 is less than or equal to first, 1, no. Now we check the second condition. We check if 3 is less than or equal to 2, no. Now as I said, 3 is nums of k. So nums of i is first, 1. Nums of 2 is j, so this is 2. And nums of 3 is the current element. As these two conditions fail, it means we have found our third condition which is satisfying. So we can directly return true as the output. Whenever these two conditions are not updated, the third else statement will be return true because this statement is passing. So you can observe the three indices i, j and k here 1, 2 and 3. So you can return true as the output. So true is returned as the output. Now let's take a look at the code. We'll apply the same steps in the Java program and then later debug using an ID so that you can get a full understanding. Coming to the function given to us, this is the return type boolean. We have to return a true or false. This is the function name and this is the input nums given to us. Like we discussed, let us declare two variables, first and second, and assign both of them to the maximum possible value an integer can hold, that is integer.max value. We are assigning integer max value to both these variables because the next time we find any integer inside this input array less than this, we can update the first and second variables accordingly. So for that we have to iterate through the input nums using a for loop starting from the 0th index until the end. So I will start from 0 until it reaches the end. Inside the for loop, first I have to update this first variable. So I check using a if statement. If the current number we are iterating at i, so if nums of i is less than or equal to the first variable, we have to update the first variable with this nums of i. So first is equal to nums of i. Next we are using a else if statement to update the second variable. That is if the current variable at i is less than or equal to the second variable, we have to update the second variable to this nums of i. And now in the else block, 
it means that for the current iteration if the if statement failed and if the else if statement failed that means first and second were not updated they remain at its previous values it means the current variable is equal to k which means this condition has been satisfied so that is why these two first and second variables haven't been updated if it would have been updated in the if block or the else if block it wouldn't have reached here it would go back to the for loop for the next iteration because these are conditional statements if these two conditions failed only this condition statement will be executed so it means this condition passed and here we can return true as the output and outside the for loop if the true hasn't been returned it means we haven't found such indices inside this nums array so outside this we can return false now let's try to run the code and the test cases are passing let's submit the code and our solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n because we're using a for loop to iterate through the input array nums so n is the length of the nums array and the space complexity is O of 1 constant space because we are not using any extra space to solve this question. Now let's debug the code with this example and see how we are getting false as the output. So I have taken the same function as lead code and this is the second example. And I am calling this function here. This will return a boolean value and the output of this function will be stored inside this boolean variable result and I am printing the result. Now let's try to debug the code and see how the working is happening. I place two breakpoints. Now let's debug the code. So here you can see nums is 54321. First and second are initialized with the maximum possible value. So the next time we access any value less than that, those two variables will be updated. So here i is equal to 0. So nums of i is nums of 0, which is 5. We are checking if phi is less than or equal to first. Phi is less than or equal to this. That is why it entered the if statement. And first, which was initially this value, will be updated with phi. Now first is equal to phi. Now as you can see, the control from here went back to the next iteration. Now i is equal to 1. So nums of 1 is 4. We check if 4 is less than or equal to the updated value which was 5. 4 is less than or equal to 5. So again first variable will be updated. Now first will be equal to 4. As you can see now first is 4. In the next iteration i is equal to 2. Second is still the max value because control haven't reached here now. Now i is equal to 2. Nums of 2 is equal to 3. We check if 3 is less than or equal to 4, yes. So now first variable will be updated again to 3. As you can see, first is 3 now. Now i is equal to 3. Nums of 3 is equal to 2. So first will be updated to 2 again. So as you can see, first is 2. Now i is equal to 4. Nums of 4 is equal to 1. First is equal to 2. 1 is less than or equal to 2. This condition passes again. And first will be updated to 1. Now first is 1. And second is still this. So you can assume first is equal to i, second is equal to this, j. Since second value is not updated yet, we haven't reached this statement yet, so the answer will be false. So you return false as the output. So false is returned as the output. That's it guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.